This is uh, Major Brian Johns, Dayton Police Investigations. Uh, we had a homicide investigation this past Sunday. Um, just afternoon on this past Sunday, we were dispatched to the 400 block of Bowen Street here in East Dayton on a report of a shooting. The remarks on a call stated that a, uh, a female, 15 years of age, was shot and killed at the residence and that she was killed by her 15-year-old sibling who was autistic and nonverbal. Uh, we got to the scene. Uh, we did find, unfortunately, uh, the young woman deceased in a boarding house uh, upstairs there at Bowen Street. Uh, we did make contact with her father and uh, stepmother, and uh, both of which stated that she was shot and killed by the sibling. Uh, upon further investigation interviews, uh, that was later proved to be false and that the uh, young lady was shot and killed uh, by her father inside uh, the Bowen Street address. So um, he was arrested that day for murder charges. Um, he met with the prosecutor's office today and uh, charges have been accepted. Now I'll read those charges uh, right now. Uh, one count of involuntary, involuntary manslaughter, one count reckless homicide, one count child endangering, uh, having weapons and her disability and gun specs on all the above charges. So he presently is in the Montgomery County Jail and uh, will face trial um, on those charges that I just read off. But I, I was there um, uh, with the entire homicide squad Sunday and to say it was a tragedy is, a, is an understatement. I don't know if how I could paint the picture for you, but um, you, you have the father um, living in a boarding house, which is very small, actually in a room where this murder occurred, along with three other children and uh, the, uh, the mother. And uh, I will say he is a convicted felon. He had no right to even possess a firearm. And uh, he had a, a shotgun and several other weapons inside the, uh, uh, the room there when this occurred. Um, so definitely a tragedy that could have been well avoided. On, on numerous fronts, not just uh, common sense, but not possessing a firearm while being a convicted felon. So, uh, any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer some. Were those, uh, I mean, his wife and three children, were they all living in that one room or were they just visiting that day? Can you tell? They were visiting that day. So yeah. ordinarily, he just, lived, he just had that room at the boarding house? Correct. And that, so the other four were visiting that day? Yes, sir. Uh, would would his wife face charges for also giving you a false statement of birth? Uh, at this point, she is not being charged. Uh, she is cooperating in the investigation. And was the 15-year-old, so uh, three children, one of them her, one of them the autistic brother who's the same age as her? Correct. Because there's a step family situation. And then there's another girl? Yeah. There was a younger child. Yes, that was also present. So um, our victim is the biological daughter um, of our suspect in this case. Um, and the, um, the, the young man who this crime was blamed on, um, our suspect is not the father of that child. And the youngest child that was present, uh, both the, uh, the suspect and the mother present at the, at the uh, Bowen Street, they share that child together. Um, what, what made you realized that the initial story you were given was not correct? Uh, I won't go into great detail, but uh, like with any investigation, um, when you arrive at the scene and those first hours are very critical, so some statements were given that really weren't consistent with each other and uh, that why as you know, we have great investigators here at the Police Department and they knew right away that those stories weren't consistent. And uh, upon further questioning, um, got an you know, uh, got an admission to the crime. I'm looking at the charges. Uh, I mean, involuntary and reckless homicide, not a murder charge here. There was some floating uh, stories floated in the neighborhood that maybe it was an accident that his finger slipped on the trigger. What, what do you? What did the evidence show you guys? Um, well, we're still going through the evidence, right? Um, so I, I would say that it's not an accident. Um, even our victim was asking him to not point the shotgun at her prior to her death. So that's not, that's not an accident. And that is the weapon you believe was used? Correct. 
there was talk about him being upset about the children being loud, maybe, or whatever. Anything like that relate to you? No. No indication of that um, uh, whatsoever. The, um, yeah, but no, no indication of that causing anything. Um, I diminish he is, he is a convicted felon, um, he has a criminal history, and the gun shouldn't have been there to begin with. Uh, and you said there were several guns there. Yeah, the murder weapon and several other firearms. You know. not, not, a, not that it matters at this point, Major Jones, but any idea on where he got the weapons from, and can they be charged as well? We are still researching that, uh, where these guns came from, and yes, they could be charged for providing a firearm to a convicted felon. Is there any uh, drugs or alcohol suspected? Um, none at the scene, but his criminal history does involve drug trafficking. That's what he is a felon for. Can Mr. Farlow provide any statements to you that explain why, what happened or why it happened? He did, but I, at this point I don't feel comfortable going into that. We'll uh, like try us in court, but um, uh, he did, uh, once he began to be honest, provide some, some sort of statements which really were also inconsistent with the evidence at the scene. Anything else on this one? Nope. All right. Uh, Major Johns also has some information about. Uh... Yeah, the day prior to the uh, Bowen Street homicide, uh, on Saturday evening, officers were dispatched to 1033 Waterfleet Avenue, also in East State, on report of a shooting. We had a young mother inside of an apartment there uh, who was holding her two-year-old child when she was shot uh, in the leg. Uh, there were some individuals uh, that's under investigation. There were uh, several individuals in an apartment above our victim um, who had a firearm and were handling it. Uh, that firearm discharged uh, twice, supposedly accidentally. Um, the information we have so far is one of the suspects had the firearm uh, was playing with it, discharged a firearm out the, the side of the apartment, like out the window. Um, the, hand, the gun was then picked up by another individual inside the apartment, and he also discharged the, uh, the, 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 the uh, handgun, supposed, supposedly uh, accidentally, and that round went through the floor and, and unfortunately struck our victim, who was her, holding her child in the apartment down below. Um, so uh, it is a miracle that the child was not killed or hurt, um, the uh, the uh, victim was taken uh, to the hospital, and uh, she will uh, be okay from her, her physical wounds, but emotionally, I imagine, pretty traumatic. You know, that was a little girl, little boy. I won't comment on the sex of it. I'll just say two-year-old child. Uh, and the two individuals in the apartment upstairs, uh, have they been they, arrested or charged? They fled. Okay. Uh, they fled the scene, so we're doing an investigation now to try to identify them. We have done several interviews and uh, follow-up continues on that case. Um, the, the message you want you know, for the community on that is, if you have weapons in your home, apartment, whatever, right? you know, you have to be concerned. Yeah, you them. know, and you know, here at the Dayton Police Department, we're trying to be very proactive in the past. Uh, we've, uh, I can tell you one that I did just a couple of years ago, we did a gun safety class at the Dayton Police Academy for the community, and one person showed up. Uh, we also provide gun locks free of charge to people if they need them. Uh, by all means, you know, every year we, we seem to have at least one or two incidents where guns are left unsecured and, uh, and people, especially sometimes children, get a hold of the guns and, and tragedies occur. Um, but in these cases here, it's just like common sense should go a long way. And uh, it seems like a lot of people or some people don't have common sense when it comes to firearms. Would you consider doing another class or? Be more than happy to. We have a we have a great academy staff, and they held the last one. We've even had pizza for people to come out, have pizza, learn about gun safety, bring your child with you if you like. Uh, they can learn too in a separate environment. Uh, so, you know, it's important for a child if you, if you see a gun, don't don't touch it. You know, just let it let it go. Um, it's the basics of gun safety, so we're more than happy to do something like that. And this particular case was, where did the weapon come from again? And um, the the one on Water Valley, yes. we're not really sure yet where that, that weapon came from. Um, we're trying to locate the suspect to, to clarify where that, where that came from. I don't know if anybody else needs to be. Can we get the address? Yeah, happened? it was uh, 1033 
833 Water of Elite Avenue in East Dayton. Yeah, that was on Saturday. That was a Saturday, and that happened um, at 6.38 in the evening. Wow. All right. Good. All right. Thanks so much, Major. Appreciate you.